Today in our 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles. Part number is RM-766. Now an automatic battery disconnect such as this is going to be the ideal solution for the vehicles that tend to slowly drain their battery down while we're flat towing them. In most cases, you'll need to leave the key on so the wheel can turn or there's some kind of power draw while it's in tow mode and when we get to our destination the battery's dead. Now the auto battery disconnect allows us to have a switch inside so we can turn off the battery connection. To do that you'll see there's two battery cables that come off. We basically just separate the connection at the positive side. One side of the disconnect runs out of the battery. It goes through the disconnect and then up to your charge panel or your charge line. Once the disconnect's active it completes that circuit so power can flow as normal. Now once you've pressed the button to disconnect that battery, we're going to separate that flow of power so there's no longer any battery power being fed into the vehicle. That way we won't have to worry about batteries being dead when we get to our destination. Now to begin our installation, we need to determine a location pretty close to our battery where we're going to be mounting the disconnect. I'm also going to remove this brace here. It's just going to allow us to get this cover off and see what kind of wires we have underneath there and what we need to do with the disconnect. To take this brace off, you'll need to pull out three bolts. We've got one here, one here, and another one right here. Use a 13 millimeter socket for these. Now you want to hang on to this and your bolts. We're going to replace this whenever we get everything connected. Now we're also going to be pulling the top off of our air box here. We've got a little clip here we want to pull up. That's going to release that tab so we can push that in and separate our plug. Now if you'll follow that wire down, there's a little push pin fastener down here that holds that to the top of the air box. So we want to get that removed. Just like that. Set it up to the side here for now. Then with the 5 16 socket or bit driver, you want to loosen up that hose clamp. All right. You don't have to take this all the way off, you just want it to be pretty loose. Now with the same size, we're going to have four screws on top of the air box here to remove. We're going to have one here, one here, then a little harder to see down here on the front edge, we're going to have a third, here on the other side, there'll be a fourth. Now if we pull on that too. We can bring it off the top of the air box. We'll lift this up and out. Set it aside. You can also pull your filter out if you want. Not really required. Then you can pull up on the bottom of that box and we'll get it out of the way. Now once we've decided on our mounting location, just make sure you got clearance all the way around it there. We're going to use a couple of the provided self-tapping screws and get it secured. Just going to mark my location here first. We'll get that out of the way and get a hole started. Now we'll bring that through the bracket there. Get that side secured down. Then we'll use our bracket on the other side as our template to set our other self-tapping screw. Now the little white wire coming off of our disconnect here is going to be a ground wire. We want to cut that and strip it back. Now I'm just going to be mounting it right in here, right on that same area that we mounted the disconnect to. You want to use the provided ring terminal. I'm going to place that on. It's going to be a little blue in there. Get that crimped down. And now we'll need a 5 16 inch socket or you can use a bit driver. Just like before we're going to create our hole first and then place on our ring terminal. All right, and that should be secure enough so you can't move that ring terminal around. Now we want to adjust and route our cables over here towards our battery. You see we've got one that says battery cable, one that says battery post. Now you can, you see how you can rotate that on that post, you just need a half inch wrench to loosen up that nut. That'll allow you to adjust it according to your application. Now the gray two wire that we have needs to run to the inside passenger compartment of our vehicle. I'm going to run this right down along our wire looms here and then 
right across behind that wire loom. We'll use several zip ties just to keep it up and out of the way there. Now if you look right down here in front of the driver's side on the firewall, you've got this large grommet where your large wire loom passes through. But you see that little round portion on top there. If we cut that, we can pass our wire right through there, get to the inside where we'll mount our slit. You see with that cut off, it's gonna give us a nice hole to pass through. I'm just gonna take the end of the wire, start running it on through. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're gonna do a braking system and stuff too, that's a good access point for that. If not, just use some silicone sealant and seal it up when you're done. Now, in your kit, you're gonna have two sections of wire loom. These are gonna go over our cables just to offer some additional protection. So we'll get those slid on there. You can use a couple of the zip ties in the kit to secure it at each end or wherever you want to. Now before you cover both of these up completely, it's a good idea to mark battery like a P on one and a C on the other one so we know which one goes to the post, which one goes to the cable. Now the cable that we have labeled post, this I want to bring over kind of into this open area. You've got your coolant reservoir right here. You can go right underneath it here. You can see kind of where my finger passes through there. Go right through there with it. That'll allow us to bring it up right in this area, which is perfect. The one cable is going to go just right back here. And we want that to run up right in this area where we're going to connect it. Now to access our cables, we want to pull back our red cover here. If you want to, you can just clip that off for now. And we've got some little release tabs, these little squares on this cover. We want to take it off as well. Set it aside. You'll see our positive cable is going to run from the post directly over to this stud. So if we separate it at that stud, we're going to separate that connection. We're going to run that ring terminal to our battery post ring terminal. To remove the nut that we have there, we're going to use a 14 millimeter socket. We want to hang on to that because we will be reusing it. Then we're going to loosen up the battery post itself. For that, we'll use a 10 millimeter. Let me just lift that off. Now to our battery post side, we're going to add on our cable here. Don't forget to put your heat shrink on first. Just like that. And we'll bring our small bolt through our post. Then you want to take one of the provided star washers in place on there. We're going to bring that through our vehicle post. We're going to add on another star washer and then our nut. Then we want to use a half inch wrench and socket and get that tightened down. You want to slide that heat shrink down and over. You can see where our bolt's at right there in the middle. And then just kind of gently heat it up a little bit at a time and allow it to shrink down around there. Now to do this, you can use a lighter or a mini torch. You can use a heat gun, of course. Now the cable that we had listed as battery cable it's going to go right down on where we just removed the factory cable from. Let's replace that factory nut that we took off. Get it tightened up. We'll take our factory cable in and we want to bring that around. We'll use our 10 millimeter socket to tighten it back up. Now we're going to get our covers put back on here. You're going to have to modify your red one slightly if you want it to close. You can leave it off. If you want it to close, you'll see I'm going to have to take this corner out a little bit just to give it some clearance there. So we'll take off a little bit at a time till it closes. Now the next portion of our kit is going to be the switch. This is what allows you to turn the battery disconnect on and off, providing power or removing power from the vehicle. It's a nice flush mount switch. You can see it's not going to take up a lot of room. 
I'm going to put it right up, right up here. There's a nice flat spot. There's nothing in there behind it. I think it'll look really nice there. It'll definitely be out of the way so it won't easily be bumped into or something like that. Now to get to that area, we're going to start popping this panel up here for this seam. Working forward, then we'll pull straight back. Trim panel tool or a small screwdriver should be what you need. Just start working forward, releasing the clips. Once we've released the last clip right down here in this area, it's pretty much just a straight back pull and that'll come off. There's the area. You can see nothing in there behind it. Now we're going to use a 5 8 either hole saw or drill bit. We want to get that drilled out. With our hole drilled out, we'll place our switch in there. Usually you can probably just kind of push it through. It's being a little stubborn, so you can just kind of twist it in. Once that's through so it's flush with our surface, we'll just take our nut. We're going to thread that on the back. And then just snug it up. You'll want to use a 19 millimeter or 3 quarter inch socket to do that. You can see up here where our wire has come out. The grommet is basically located right behind this box. So you'll have to reach in behind there to find it and pull it on up over. I'm going to bring my wire. I want to have a little bit of excess here. So if they take that panel off, they're not going to rip the wires out of our switch. So I'm going to zip tie it off right up here to the wire loom. Now we need to separate the jacketing off of the end of our wire here. There's two wires located inside. Just want to cut that outside portion. You don't want to actually cut your wires. We'll strip the end of each one of those back. Now on the back of our switch, we've got two Phillips screws. I'm going to back both of those out. I'm just going to place our wires in and tighten those back up just so they make a good connection. We don't have to over tighten them. Now I'm going to slide my panel back in place. We're done with our switch. We just want to make sure that wire is not going to get caught in either of these two clips. Now we need to take our 7.5 amp fuse and we're going to place that in the fuse holder connected to the disconnect itself. So you got a black cap there. We'll pull that off. Place in our fuse. And then put that cap back on. Now before we get our air box put back in, let's just test it make sure it's working properly. Now we'll just test it out with the vehicle with something on. You can see with the radio's on, we've got our dash lights on. Now we should be able to hit that button and those shut off. Now we can hit the button again and we'll hear our solenoid click. That's reconnecting the battery. And once we've confirmed everything's working, we'll just get our stuff put back in place here. We've got our air box to go in. And we'll also get our cross brace put back in here. And with everything working properly, that's going to complete our installation of the Roadmaster Automatic Battery Disconnect with Switch for towed vehicles. Part number RM-766 on our 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe.